everybody I'm just fiddling around with um, with Facebook right not with Facebook with uh, the other one <laughs> with Instagram right now trying to trying to get this um, sorted out because here we go there we go there we are all right oh no don't want that one here we go okay so there we are we are going live on Facebook, or we should be live. We are live on Instagram, and because we always do such extreme things, I am trying, yes, for the first time ever, <laughs> we have Facebook on my webcam, we have Instagram on an iPad with the very lovely subtle filter, which I love, which I'm going to carry around with me wherever I go. And we're now on Instagram, uh, not on Instagram as well, but we're also on Twitter. So this is a soft launch. The lighting's a bit off on Twitter. I'll fix that for next time. But I am actually now live on not one, not two, but three platforms at the same time. So this is going to be interesting. This is a soft launch for Twitter. We do have a new account, which is unsurprisingly first chapter fun. So you can go and find us there. I have no idea if anyone's watching on Twitter, on Twitter. probably not, because we have zero followers. <laughs> but the whole plan is to, to build that as well and to stream on three platforms at the same time. I have to say the lighting on Twitter absolutely sucks. Come on, Twitter, get a good filter going, please. Um, anyway, good afternoon. It is 12.30. I hope you can see me on Facebook. Uh, looks like you can. I'm just, um, excuse me while I fiddle around. Uh, and make sure that you can see me on all of the platforms as this is, like I said, a bit of a soft launch. Yes, I'm there. Okay, perfect. So <laughs> I see the comments. I see the comments on Facebook as well coming in, which I can't see on um, on the Facebook Live for whatever, but I see that they're there. So I see I'm on all three platforms. Okay. <laughs> we like to do extreme stuff on First Chapter Fun. So welcome to our first first Chapter Fun afternoon episode. I hope none of you were waiting for us at 11.30 a.m. because it is now 12.30 p.m. and this is the new time for first Chapter Fun. Thank you all for being here. All scheduling stuff, my kids started back at school yesterday. They're there part-time, not the same days. It was an interesting weekend, to say the least. How are you all doing? I hope everyone's well. I hope everyone's safe still in the midst of this pandemic that doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. We have increasing cases in, in Ontario at the moment. They're going up, so um, not sure what's going to happen with that. But uh, yes, we have a little bit. We have half an hour or so of respite, I guess, where we can just listen to a book and uh, forget the troubles of the world just for that tiny sliver of time. So if this is the first time that you have joined First Chapter Fun, this is the place where normally on Facebook at First Chapter Fun, the group, on Instagram at First Chapter Fun, and now new, and we'll see if we continue, on Twitter at First Chapter Fun, my fictional partner in crime, Hank Philippi Ryan, and myself, Hannah Mary McKinnon, read the first chapter of other authors' books. So if this is the first time you've joined, a couple of things. One, if any of the platform platforms uh, boots me out, I will come back and start again. It's not you, it's me um, or the system. And um, today we'll be reading from Rick Mofina's book, uh, The Dying Hour, which I'm very excited to read to you. I'll show you the, the cover in a minute. But first, um, if this is the first time that you've joined, for those of you who are veterans, you, you'll know this, of course. This is episode 90, nine zero, episode 90. So first chapter fun started back in March, uh, went daily for 53 days. And as of the 12th of May, we read, Hank and I read twice a week, once on, um, <laughs> not once on Facebook, no, also every Tuesday, and every Thursday, now live at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, the new time. So if you have not seen any of the, the previous episodes, you can go back and watch them all. Certainly on Twitter, uh, not on Twitter, on, oh, I'm getting confused now. 
On Instagram and on Facebook, they are all saved, Instagram, IGTV, and Facebook in our video archive under media. So, two other things before I introduce you to Rick Muffina and his wonderful book. Tuesday's pub day for a lot of books, including this one. This is Don't Look For Me by Wendy Walker. We read from this one just last week and it came out today. So massive con congratulations, Wendy. It's getting stellar reviews and for good reason because it's stellar. Um, and another one that is coming out today, now I'm using the Kindle Fire, isn't this awesome? Uh, this is The Silent Conspiracy. I hope you can see that on Facebook and, and everywhere. This is The Silent Conspiracy by L.C. Shaw, also known as Lynn Constantine, half of the Liv Constantine duo uh, <clears throat> who wrote um, the next, the next wife and the last Mrs. Parrish, uh, which and we have read from from the last Mrs. Parrish. So this one is out also today. Massive congratulations to you, Lynn. Now today's book. Let me introduce you to today's book. This is the cover. <clears throat> I hope you can see that well. This is Rick Mofina's The Dying Hour, and this book actually we're we're, we're going back in time because this book published in two thousand and five. Rick has been writing forever and a day and he's watching so if you have any questions for him please do ask him about his work I'm going to read you his bio um, and you will see there's lots and lots and lots of uh, accolades and all kinds of awards that he's won so this is the dying hour and let me introduce you to Rick but before I do that I need to tell you about a giveaway because Rick is generously giving away one copy of The Dying Hour to a lucky member of the audience. So if you're watching, you need to do, uh oh, screen's gone dead. You, if you're watching, this is what you need to do to enter. Go, not now, right now, make a note of Rick's website, rickmofina.com. Go to his website, send him an email, and just with the subject line, first chapter fun and you will be entered uh, into the giveaway for a copy of The Dying Hour. And he says, they must email me to enter and I won't share their email or sign them up to a newsletter, I promise. So that's what you'll have to do. So go to his website, not now, not right now, but make a note of it, rickmuffina.com and make sure you send him a little note um, to enter for a chance to win a copy of, oh, it's flipped. The Dying Hour. There we go. Let me show that. There we go. We should be able to see that on all three platforms. All right. So let me introduce you to Rick. USA Today best-selling author Rick Muffina is a former journalist who has interviewed murderers on death row, flown over LA with the LAPD and patrolled with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police near the Arctic. He's also reported from the Caribbean, Africa and Kuwait's border with Iraq. His books have been published in nearly 30 countries, that's three zero, including an unauthorised illegal bootleg edition of his first book in Iran. His work has been praised by so many people, so many people, I will, I will name a few. James Patterson, Dean Kuntz, Lee Child, Lisa Unger, Heather Graham, Linwood Barclay, Peter Robinson, Kay Hooper, the list just goes on and on and on. The Crime Writers of Canada, the International Thriller Writers and the Private Eye Writers of America have listed his titles among the best in crime fiction. He's a two-time winner of Canada's Arthur Ellis Award, a four-time Thriller Award finalist, a two-time Seamus Award finalist, and a Barry Award finalist. His new standalone thriller is called Their Last Secret. It's noted that he's grateful that while in the seventh grade at St. Michael's Academy, Sister Mary Avita gave him a B plus for story composition. Since then, the Library Journal has called him one of the best thriller writers in the business. So if that doesn't entice you to read, <laughs> to pick up one of Rick's books and give it a whirl, I don't know what will. So you can find him on social uh, pretty well as Rick Muffina everywhere. That's his uh, website, rickmuffina.com. 
Instagram handle, Twitter handle, and Facebook, they're all the same, Rick Mofino. So make sure you go and follow him and don't forget to send him an email. So I see lots of people joining. Uh, we have Elizabeth, we have Daisy, we have Hank, of course, we have Rick is here and Jill on Facebook and Glenny. Glenny always posts a little tulip, it's ever so sweet. We have Bonner, we have Carla. Carla, I think you've probably watched, maybe not every episode, but certainly all of them. And Beth, uh, on Instagram, we have, we have Jennifer, Jumba, our favorite libra librarian. We have Little Miss Fab uh, and so many people. The Woman Who Walks, um, lots of people joining today. This is absolutely fabulous. And on Twitter, we had some people and they've all gone. So <laughs> we're gonna have to make sure we have some followers and uh, and so we, we, we get other people to enjoy um, First Chapter Fun because one or two platforms obviously isn't enough. We need three. If anyone knows of an app, that streams to multiple platforms live at the same time. Can you send me a note? Because that would really be a lot easier. All right, so Rick is here, Rick is watching. Um, don't forget to ask him some questions about his work. Um, here we go, about all those things that he's done. I mean, come on, you know, patrolling with the, the, the RCMP near the Arctic and, Jeez, I lead a very boring life. I used to work in IT recruitment. Mm. <laughs> so this is the book we're reading from, The Dying Hour, published in 2005. So you can absolutely get your hands on it right now. And it's a lovely way to int get introduced to Rick's um, protagonist, the uh, uh, journalist Jason Ward. So let me tell you a little bit about The Dying Hour. The Dying Hour introduces Jason Wade, a rookie crime reporter with the Seattle Mirror, a loner who grew up in the shadow of a brewery in one of the city's blue collar neighborhoods. At the Seattle Mirror, he is competing for the single full-time job being offered through the paper's intense intern program. But unlike the program's other young reporters who attended big name schools and worked at other big metro dailies, Wade put himself through community college and lacked the same experience. Wade struggles with his haunting past as he pursues the story of Karen Harding, a college student whose car was found abandoned on a lonely stretch of highway in the Pacific Northwest. How could this beloved young woman with the altruistic nature simply vanish? Wade battles mounting odds and cutthroat competition to unearth the truth behind Karen Harding's disturbing case. Her disappearance is a story he cannot give up, never realising the toll it could exact from him. The Dying Hour is a bone-chilling, mesmerising page-turner that introduces readers to an all-too-human young hero who journeys into the darkest regions of the human heart to confront a nightmare. The international thriller writers selected The Dying Hour as a finalist for a thriller award for Best Paperback Original in 2006, and it's the first of the Jason Wade trilogy show you the cover again take my glasses off because everyone's fuzzy otherwise oh look we have a viewer on twitter this is amazing hello twitter viewer please don't leave or i'll be on my own here we go this is what i'm reading from the dying hour here on first chapter fun new edition at 12 30 p.m on facebook instagram and twitter so here we go settle down and let me read to you the Dying Hour by Rick Mafina, Chapter One. Karen Harding had to get away. She was alone, driving from Seattle north on Interstate 5, wipers slapping at the rain as she tried to understand why her fiancé was suddenly forcing her to make a life-changing decision. Karen brushed her tears away. Why was he doing this? Luke's change of heart had staggered her. She needed to leave for a few days to think. After they spoke, she threw some things into a bag, tossed it into her Toyota and set off to see her big sister Marlene, who lived in Vancouver. Karen didn't bother calling ahead. This was an emergency. Besides, Marlene would be home. She and her husband rarely left town because of their two kids and their jobs. The air horn of a freight liner yanked Karen's attention back to the highway. Her windshield was a watery curtain. 
Lights from oncoming traffic stabbed at her from the darkness. Big rigs trailed blinding spray as they passed, their wakes nearly swamping her. Time for a break. She exited at a truck stop outside of Bellingham. A massive map of Washington and British Columbia covered the lobby wall. Below it, a corkboard papered with ads for trucks, bonding agents and driving jobs. Faces of missing children, women and fugitive men stared at her from posters. Video games beeped and ponged next to the soda and snack machines. She was hungry. In the restaurant, country music mingled with the aroma of deep-fried food, coffee and the clink of cutlery. Amid the murmur of weary men in ball caps, plaid shirts and jeans, Karen searched for a seat. She walked by a woman and a young girl laughing over ice cream, a white-haired couple sharing soft conversation over soup, then a bearded man who wore dark glasses and the white collar of a reverend. He was sitting alone, reading a book and sipping coffee. She found a booth by the window and ordered a chicken sandwich. Wind-driven rain bled against the glass. As Karen resumed wrestling with her problem, the truck stop's electrical power surged. The lights flickered. Karen glanced around the diner. The Reverend was watching her. He offered a warm smile. Karen tried smiling, but looked away. She ached to talk to her sister, to someone who might offer guidance when she was struck by an idea. Maybe the fact a Reverend was nearby was a sign. Perhaps she could talk to him. Could she confide her dilemma to a stranger? She looked to his booth, but... He was gone. Karen noticed the tip left by his coffee cup as the trucker's conversations grew louder. Those who were talking on cell phones began alerting the others to trouble arising from the storm, a wreck at the border crossing near Blaine. A reefer and a loaded tanker, one of them said. Got to push your wait time way back. Couple of hours. Not good. Karen needed to reach her sister tonight. She looked at her folded map for an alternative entry into Canada. She'd always crossed at Blaine. She examined the web of roads in Washington's northwest corner. Linden looked easy enough. Exit northbound on Route 539 at the north end of Bellingham. Straight shot to the border. If Linden was choked, she'd try Sumas. The storm was unrelenting. Karen couldn't see much. Gusts rattled her Toyota. She tightened her grip questioned her sanity and considered returning to her apartment in Seattle or at least finding a motel for the night. No, she estimated that she could be at Marlene's home in less than two hours if she was cautious. But this route made her uneasy. She saw fewer towns, buildings, houses, lights. She pressed on, unable to see the streams, the forested foothills or the slopes of the Cascade Mountains. But they were out there, veiled by darkness. As she drove deeper into it, Karen felt alone, vulnerable, as if she were being swallowed. She switched on her radio to find a jazz station to help her relax. A warning light began blinking, the low fuel indicator. How could that be? It made no sense. She'd filled up at the truck stop. Maybe it was faulty. All right, she'd stop at the next gas station, just to be safe. But there was nothing out there except the wind, the rain and the night. She kept driving. After a few more miles, more warning lights began flashing. Engine. Oil. Her car began vibrating. The motor sputtered, then began bucking. Karen was jolted. Dear Lord! She pulled over, switched off the ignition and took a deep breath. Be calm. Wait ten minutes. Start the car and drive slowly to the nearest gas station. Ten minutes passed. Karen turned the key. Nothing. She tried again. Nothing. Take it easy. She fished through her bag for her cell phone and a dress book. She'd call the auto club, but the familiar silver shape of her phone failed to emerge. It had to be here. Karen dumped the contents of her bag on the passenger seat, feeling her stomach tighten. In her hurry to leave Seattle, she'd forgotten her phone. It was in her apartment, charging on her kitchen counter. She closed her eyes, inhaled, then exhaled slowly. Rain hammered on her car as the wind rocked it. She tried starting it again. Nothing. 
She reached for the manual and flipped through it, knowing it was futile. She knew nothing about cars. Karen had no choice. She had to try something. She reached for the hood release. She found her pen light and umbrella. Maybe the trouble was obvious. She got out and a violent gust snapped her umbrella, tearing the cloth, exposing the frame's prongs like the ribs of an eviscerated animal. Karen managed to raise the hood. Her tiny light came to life and she probed an alien world of wires, metal, rubber, hoses and plastic reservoirs with coloured fluids. Maybe something had come loose. Right. How would she even know? As she reached to the engine to test a cable, the world began glowing in intense white light. The hissing rain yielded to a growing roar as a line of several big trucks thundered by, throwing waves of spray that drenched her. Defeated, Karen retreated into her car. She tossed her twisted umbrella into the back seat, then grabbed the wheel to steady herself. Soaked to her bones, she began shivering. Don't panic. Think of a plan. Stay in the car. Change into dry clothes. Maybe a patrol car or Samaritan would stop and call a tow truck company or something. If not, she could spend the night in her Toyota. It, it wasn't too cold. She had a blanket. In the morning, she'd start walking. The next town couldn't be far. She reached for her clothes bag and froze. Two white circles blossomed in her rearview mirror. A vehicle had pulled onto the shoulder and was approaching. The lights grew brighter as it crept closer, coming to a stop a few yards behind her. It looked like an RV. Someone was going to help her. A door opened on the RV's passenger side and a figure stepped out. A man, wearing a long, long overcoat and a hat. He stood at the rear bumper of Karen's car, silhouetted in the glare of his high beams and the curtain of rain. Hope fluttered in her stomach. She wiped her hands across her face and smoothed her wet hair as his shadow crossed the light. Karen gave thanks. The first thing she noticed at her door was a white collar. Then she recognised the beard and ball cap of the reverend from the truck stop. Relieved, she lowered her window about ten inches. Your car giving you trouble, miss? Karen hesitated. She couldn't see his face. His voice was a grating, almost laryngitic whisper. Yes, it quit and won't start. Is anyone coming to help you? No one. Let me take a look. The reverend switched on a flashlight and walked to the front. The hood was still raised. Karen felt him pulling and tapping as he inspected the motor. Try starting it now. She turned the key. Nothing happened. The front end dipped as he pressed hard on something. Again? Nothing. He closed the hood, returned to the window. Smells like something's burned out on you. Could be anything. I've got a phone in my motorhome. I can call the service truck for you, if you like. Yes, please. Oh, uh, wait. She turned to the passenger seat, sifted through the contents emptied from her bag. I'm a member of the auto club. Here's their card with their toll-free line. Goodness. He swept his flashlight from the card to Karen. You're sopping wet. I tried fixing it myself. I can see that. You shouldn't sit here and risk catching a cold. You're welcome to wait with me in my RV until they come. Karen weighed his offer. He seemed kind. He was a clergyman. She had considered approaching him at the truck stop to talk. Rain poured from his hat as he waited. You're a Christian, aren't you, Karen? She caught her breath. How did you know that? And my name? The hat tipped to her club card. Your name's on your card here, and I noticed you have an ictus bumper sticker, the fish symbol for Jesus. Oh, right, she nodded. Of course. I saw you in the restaurant near Bellingham. You looked troubled. Karen was half smiling in amazement as she reflected on everything that had happened to her today. She had prayed for help. Karen, would you like to wait with me, or do you prefer some solitude? Was this a sign? A reverend finding her adrift in her personal storm? Was it all part of a master plan? I think, I think I'd like to wait with you. The reverend nodded. She collected her things, then followed the stranger to his vehicle. He opened the door. 
a few small papers swirled from the RV and fluttered into the night before Karen stepped inside. Don't get in the car! Don't get in the RV, Karen! What are you doing? That's, weren't you told as a kid not to get into a stranger's car? I said that the other day, didn't I? And now we do it, we, people do it all the time with Uber. But anyway, anyway, that's another discussion. That is just, you just know, well, you know she disappears from um, the blurb of the book. But you know, this is not going to end well. So that was the first chapter of The Dying Hour by Rick Mofina, The first in the Jason Wade trilogy. And you can get your hands on it right now because it published a number of years ago. So you don't have to wait for release date. You can add it to your to be read list right now. So I hope you enjoyed that. Good morning, Sharon. Uh, Jennifer says it's a gorgeous cover. Yes, I agree. Um, <laughs> Hank is saying, no, Karen, no. I know, no. When I was reading this, I thought, what are you doing, Karen? We all know not to get into a stranger's car. Um, and Jennifer's also, Jennifer's also screaming at the book don't do it yes don't do it was too late i think karen's a goner um lots of comments on facebook as well <laughs> daisy also says no don't get into the rv see rick we're all screaming at her not to get into that bloody rv pardon my french and she did it anyway but <laughs> hank says bye bye karen oh dear uh, Little Miss Fab says, beautiful setup. It is. So he, I'm, I'm guessing in the next chapter, this is when Jason comes in. And will he solve the mystery? Will he figure out what happened to Karen? And is she dead or is she alive? Well, I'm not telling and I'm sure Rick won't either. OK, so let me show you that cover again and remind you of the fabulous giveaway uh, hold on, I'm, I'm struggling here with all my multiple devices. <laughs> this is the cover again, The Dying Hour. And don't forget, if you join later on, there's a giveaway going on. Um, and to enter to win a copy of The Dying Hour, please go to rickmafina.com. Send him an email, pop first chapter fun in the subject line, and you will be in for a chance to win. And Rick promises he will not sign you up for a newsletter or spam you and all that stuff. Okay. So that was our first, well, it wasn't, it was our 90th 9-0 episode of First Chapter Fun. And um, all of the others, 89, if you haven't joined before, are, of course, in our archive, as mentioned on the top. Let me tell you about episode 91. Episode 91, we have a cyber thriller called Dark Tomorrow by Reese Hirsch. So this will not be read tomorrow, but on Thursday on the first chapter fun at 12.30 p.m. So make sure you join us for that. Rick, thank you very much for letting us read for you. Uh, actually, Rick just said, Hannah, thanks so much. And Hank too, you're so, so welcome. Thank you for trusting us with your book. I'm always so grateful to um, the authors and publishers who allow us, who allow Hank and I to read for them. It's such a, such a pleasure, such good fun. And my to be read list is out of control i think it already was before but even 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 more so now so i hope you enjoyed that episode i hope you will join us on thursday uh, at 12 30 p.m for dark tomorrow by reese hirsch um and we will we will uh, hopefully we'll see you then so as always until then please stay safe stay kind and we'll see you on thursday thank you for watching